Do you want to use your drone to make super high quality 3D models of buildings and areas? In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to transform your drone into an accurate 3D scanner that you can use to offer clients, customers, or maybe just for fun to create 3D models. There's lots of different applications for this. One, of course, is measurement. Roofers love to use this for measuring roofs to figure out how much supplies they need or topographic maps or all kinds of other cool things that you can do. In today's video, I'm gonna use a bunch of tools that are majority free. You can use them pretty much to learn indefinitely for free. And there are some paid features, but those will not impact your ability to use this for hobbies at all. So first up, there's a couple of things that we need to do, specifically with our drone, to get the best quality models. It's a couple settings that we need to set, specifically under the camera setting. So it's best before we start flying to get everything ready to go. Also, I recommend a good number of drone batteries because you will often very quickly go through them. So let's go through and get started. So I don't have an SD card in there. I'm going to do a 256 gigabyte SD card. That's going to mean that this is going to be able to take a lot of pictures. You often find that you're looking at maybe 10, 20 gigabytes for a decently sized model. So next up, um, let's actually work on the settings. So a couple of things that you want to notice is I have a very bright camera uh, set up specifically for lighting. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the camera setting. So you notice in the bottom here, in the bottom right, there is an auto option. We're going to want to set these all to manual. So a couple of important things is number one, it, you want it to be a JPEG. Uh, format specifically because that includes the um, location data slash position data it's very important for actually reconstructing the models dng slash raw doesn't actually do as good um, and i actually don't think it has the information data as easily accessible so a couple things is we're going to want to go in here and we're going to want to adjust these settings so iso is going to help reduce with noise. So the lower you have the ISO, there's going to be less like noise per se you're going to have in your thing. However, it's going to be darker. And at a certain point, if it's too dark, you can't make anything out. Shutter is important. We want to set that to pretty much as high possible. So sorry, as low as possible. You want to set this as low as possible. So um, as you can see here, this is the lowest it goes. So shutter is basically how fast the um, image is taken. So if the image takes a long time to be taken, then yes, it may be super bright. However, it'll be pretty blurry. So we want to make sure that that is as high as possible. Also, you probably want to fly on a sunny day and we probably want the ISO down relatively as well. Probably want the ISO down to about, I'd say a reasonable amount is probably 400. So we can probably crank that up a little bit, but this is how fast the picture will be taken. Right now it will take a one millisecond to take the picture, which means that the how fast will the drone fly in one millisecond is the goal. I have my ISO set to 400. I expect that I'll have to bring that actually down when we get outside. Um, a couple other things is you can do 12 megapixels or 48 megapixels. 48 megapixels gets you a little higher quality, but in my opinion, I've actually noticed better quality in the 12 megapixels, specifically for what we're doing. Um, however, you can of course argue, um, depending on like what your preferences are, light balance and everything else is relevant. So there's our camera settings. I wanna have the shutter as low as possible and also the ISO not too high. So that should be everything. So now that we have our settings configured properly, we also need to determine how we're going to fly the drone so that we can create good quality 3D models. Now, simply put, if you just go up there and fly and take a bunch of pictures, that's not going to result in the best quality model. What we need to do is have something called overlap, and that's overlap between the images, so that a certain percentage, usually around 80 to 70 percent, is consistent throughout the whole model. So that means that every time you take a picture, 70 percent of that picture is similar to the last. So in order to do this, we actually often use tools to automatically fly the drone and do this for us. Um, the one that I use that I made is called Waypoint Map, and it works for the DJI Mini 4 Pro, the Air 3, and the Mavic 3 family. That way, if you're using one of those drones, you can go through and basically have the drone do a lot of this for you. It uses the built-in DJI Waypoints feature, and if you want to see a whole video about that, um, I'll include a link to that in the description. But for the most part, I'm just going to breeze through it set it up there's a whole dedicated video on it again so if you wanted to understand the intricacies of that you probably want to go watch that 
So specifically, we don't want to fly our mission by hand. So what we're instead going to do is we're going to go through and select this area. And we want to basically make a couple models of this. So I'm going to use some paid features. However, if you want to replicate what I'm doing now, you just instead, before you start the mission, you turn on the time shots feature. So it automatically goes through and takes a picture every couple seconds um, instead of just taking pictures at each of these points. So instead, when I generate this out, I'm going to have the option to have every single um, point take a picture, but um, you won't. So you can go through and just either manually set these once this generates, or you can go through and just do the time shots feature whenever you fly the drone. So now that we've got one in, we usually, for a fixed point that we're circling, we probably want to do a couple concentric. Um, I usually find that just doing a quick couple concentric points usually results in a pretty high quality model. Um, and I'm just going to generate three concentric points like that. And then I'm just going to download the KMC file. And then it's going to load that up right up there. I also am going to go through here and go through and do a little circling of this little bathhouse here. So we're just going to do that as well. And this one I'm going to do a little bit tighter as well. And then I'm just going to have two circles. And usually having a couple circles results in a really good quality model. So now that we're done with all those, again, I'll remind you there's a whole bunch of different options here. You can have it reverse, change the orientation, all stuff to get higher quality models. And uh, I'm just going to load this into my controller now. Again, watch the tutorial. I am doing this for my specific controller. You may have a different controller. And we are good to go. So that should be loaded up in the controller. We should be go good to go and fly these. So now if you followed the waypoint map tutorial in the other video, um, everything should be loaded up right here. You just select the mission, you hit go, you hit fly, and then you're all ready to go. The drone will automatically go up and it will start taking pictures. So after everything is ready to go, let's just hit go. Let's just watch the drone go up and take the pictures. And again, it will fly with that consistent overlap. And we don't have to do anything other than sit back, watch, and I guess according to the FAA, pay attention. So here it goes. It'll zoom up and we'll be good to go. So um, it's going to fly over to the start point. I believe we set the start point to the right of this. Um, so then it will fly over there first and then aim the camera down properly. This is actually video for my Mavic 3. I didn't have any video of this when I did this with the Mini 4 Pro just recently. Um, it was a little distracted, but you may notice that's why there's a 7X and a 1X. Um, but the photos I will be showing are fully from the Mini 4 Pro. So this will then slide over here, focus on the area, and uh, we'll start taking pictures. So if you want to replicate this, that's waypointmap.com. And now um, let's process the data set into a 3D model. So now you're going to want to go over to aerialmodel.com. This will allow you to create 25 images worth of a 3D model for free. You can do it five times a week and we're just going to create a project. Now I'm going to load in my full thing. This is again software that I've written and basically just go through and load in the full amount of images uh, that I have here. So I'm just going to select them and then wait for them to upload and then process out into a 3D model. So now that our model is generated, we can view a lot of things. Um, I currently, you can set of course to like a normal color mode. Um, this is a full shareable link, so you can go through and share this with your friends if you'd like. And also, there's a bunch of different measurement options. So I usually find this works best on my desktop. I'm also going to adjust the um, quality settings real quick because I have a little higher end computer. However, I'm just going to go through and also switch to topographic. So this allows you to pretty much see some things that are kind of interesting. Maybe you're doing some leveling for a client or something like that. You want to be able to see how the land looks without all the distractions of actually having like roads and stuff in here. So this allows you to see kind of how the dynamics change. You can see where there's some height, where there's not some height. And then of course, quality is also indicated by the size of the point. There's a lot of points here, as you can see here, it's not as accurate as it is down here. So accuracy is of course determined by the size of the point. As you can see our roof here looks pretty good. 
Um, you can definitely tell that this whole soccer field is relatively flat. Again, as we get towards the edges, the quality deteriorates a little bit, but you can still see that it is relatively flat and relatively accurate. Now, I was noticing that as well that it looks like this gets a little bit lower over here, which is interesting, but you can view all kinds of sorts of stuff. And then you can also switch to monochrome to maybe make out some weird indentions in the ground if you were just looking for some type of maybe hidden pipe or something. So that's the, I want to say colors aspect of it. Um, now we can also kind of measure some things. So interesting about this as well as we can maybe, maybe you're trying to do a roof job. You're trying to see like, you know, how much roofing you need. You could of course do this and then you could also go through and even maybe find an angle. So let's see, how are we this, I thought this was the measure angle, but no, oh, there we go. That's what I should have done. But then you can go through and measure the angle from that. So I'm going to go through, do that there adjust this a little bit as well so I can get a full idea of how much roofing I'm going to need um, and that's actually really great for roofers as well so they can figure out just how much they need to build out and purchase before actually going out and um, getting to the job site. So you can use this for all kinds of measurements you can maybe highlight something maybe you want to see like the total volume of something roughly you could maybe find a pile of dirt figure out how much dirt you need etc. You can also highlight all sorts of different stuff. And then of course you can measure volume, you can figure out how much space you need, etc. So all kinds of little gizmos to mess around with. Um, and there's even an area option as well. So once you go through you can figure out just how much space you need, etc. So this is, becomes a really great tool specifically if you are offering this to a client. You can share this to, as a link. They can go through and access this without having really any complications. They don't need a custom software to view it. They don't need any of that. It's just literally a shareable link that you go through, send to your client, and it's fully ready to go. Again, 25 images is entirely for free. That'd be enough to probably get you a relatively decent quality model of this little building. And then of course, if you wanna go up higher and that supports the service itself. So here we are at the baseball field. Um, interestingly, I would be interested to see how much there is some leveling. This would be awesome actually for the people that work and maintain this because you could really tell where the mounds of dirt really are. You can tell there was a little bit here. If we switch back to normal, there was, I think they just recently redid it. Um, but you can really tell like where the ground has changed. Um, obviously if you had like the RTK module and stuff, this would be a little bit higher quality. But it's really cool to see that there it looks like there is a little bit of higher ground around the dune and then of course this gets a little cooler so a little lower it could also be attributed to the lack of quality there wasn't many pictures here but it's interesting just to see that dynamic of you know what's higher and what's not so i'm going to switch back over to the normal color mode is there anything interesting this will tell us it doesn't look like it. Nothing crazy. Nothing we don't already know. But um, overall, relatively decent quality model as well. We can go through and then also take these same measurements as well. So say we want to figure out, maybe we want to figure out if we could build something over here. We're trying to plan that out. Do we have enough space? How much space do we need? It looks like we're good there. It looks like we can probably want to bring that down as well. But we can figure out, do we have enough space? Is there enough space there to build something? It looks like that's all good. Yeah, bring that a little bit more too. But yeah, no, you have definitely lots of options. A great thing to send to your clients um, that you can download the 3D model of it of, and then you might need to tweak it. You might need to put like a base on it or something, a little bit of post-processing, um, but overall then you can go through and start 3D printing that as well.